Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. If you're watching this video, it might be two reasons. One, you're looking for your very first DSLR, or two, you might have a camera, let's say four or five years old, that you wanna replace. I myself have an old T2i, and so these two new cameras, the T4i and the 60D is actually not that new, but I'm seeing if these two cameras can replace my old T2i. I've had these cameras for about a month now. I've taken time lapses with them, actually quite a few time lapses. I've taken them to concerts, probably where I shouldn't have. I've even taken them rock climbing. Basically, you know, if I went somewhere, I took both cameras with me. So right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, there's not much image quality difference between these two cameras. I've looked, I've gotten down into the pixel peeping, whatever, it's, there. I don't like to pixel peep too much. I don't like to get down into the pixel level to see what's going on. But basically, and we'll, we're gonna talk about this more later, but both these cameras are pretty equal in terms of image quality. Let's talk about how they're similar and different. Right off the bat, very similar, is they're only $10 difference in price when I started this review. Both have APS-C 18 megapixel sensors, both have tilt-out screens, both only take SD cards, and both shoot about five frames per second. So how are they different? The T4i has a touch screen. T4i has autofocus for video. The T4i can record up to 30 minutes creating multiple files. The 60D has an aperture wheel. 60D has a Kelvin adjustment. The 60D has third stop ISO adjustments. The batteries are different. The HDMI outputs are different. The 60D has a top LCD display. The 60D has a bigger grip. T4i has a Digic 5 processor while the 60D has a Digic 4 processor. The T4i has a stereo mic and the 60D has a mono mic. The 60D has a pentaprism while the T4i has a pentamira. One eight thousandths of a second shutter for the 60D and one four thousandths of a second for the T4i. The 60D has an electronic level. The 60D has aluminum and polycarbonate resin with fiberglass for its body, while the T4i has a stainless steel and polycarbonate resin with fiberglass. The 60D has a spring in the SD door, and the 60D has a mode dial lock while the T4i doesn't. So basically the two big new feature differences are the touchscreen on the T4i, and the T4i has autofocus mode for video. Before I get into image quality and pixel peeping and all that stuff, I want to let you guys know that I'm done with my training for the T4i. It's a getting starting guide and it's about two and a half hours long. So keep an eye out for it. It should be out in a couple of weeks. Before I got my first DSLR camera a few years ago, there were many digital SLRs that came out before it at least 10 years prior. When the Canon 5D Mark II came out, I got really excited, but it was totally out of my price range back then. Then when the 7D came out, I got even more interested, but it was still out of my reach. Then finally, the T2i came out and I was so happy because it was using the same sensor and one of the same processors as the 7D. So I knew I'd be getting the same video quality as the 7D, but at a much lower cost. Since then, the 60D came out in August 2010, then in the T3i in February 2011. Now the T4i has come out earlier this summer and they're all using the same APS-C sensor that the original 7D did back in 2009. So like I said before, I really had to pixel peep. These cameras have a different sensor and they have a different processor. When I take a raw image, I understand I bypass the picture style, the sharpness, the contrast, the saturation, the color tone, the white balance, the white balance shift, the auto lighting optimizer, peripheral illumination correct, highlight tone priority. And when we compare the raw images, the stills, at ISO 800, I gotta say, I'm really not seeing much difference between the two. So I'm to assume that we're bypassing the processor altogether when we shoot raw because these images look the same. So my guess is these sensors actually are the same. They both have the same pixel count. It's just that maybe the T4i has some sort of special layer on top of it or dedicated pixels just for autofocus mode and movie mode. So when we shoot JPEG, which does use the processor, and we move our way up to ISO 1600, I would think we'd see less noise from the T4i, but I'm really not seeing it. When we move to ISO 3200, I'm expecting the 60D to start to suffer in comparison, but again, I'm not seeing much difference. Then when we move up to all the way up to 6400, I'm not even seeing any sort of color shift or anything, one getting noisier than the other. Now 
All right, I know I'm gonna get comments, people saying, but Dave, Dave, I can see a difference. You know, when it comes down to it, if I have to like look at one image and back to the other image and I'm spending more than like 30 seconds looking back and forth and back and forth and I'm like, I don't see much difference at all. I'm confused which one's which. To me, it's like, those are minute, very small differences I don't even wanna spend that much time on. To me, like a difference would be when you compare the Nikon D800 to the Canon 5D Mark III and you just see how much the Nikon D800 is kicking Canon's butt in terms of dynamic range or latitude and you can really see in the shadows. To me, that's a difference. So next up, let's talk about rolling shutter and having the Digic 5 processor, which is a faster processor than the Digic 4, you know, it's supposed to give you less noise, which I didn't really see. And now it's supposed to give you better, you know, faster processing, so we should see less rolling shutter. But again, I'm not really seeing that much difference here. So one of the new features on the T4i is the touchscreen, and I really like it. Uh, to tell you why, when I would use this T4i and I would start touching the screen and it was great and I could do things really fast and then I'd go back to the 60D and I'd be like, I want to touch the screen but it won't let me and I would get frustrated. So to me that's a good sign that I really like the touch screen. Sure you can get the screen all smudgy with your fingers, but if you're one of those people that doesn't like to get it all smudgy, you can use the controls and never even touch the touch screen. One of the other things that's really nice is when you're going from one side of the menu to the other. Um, you could do it so much faster with a touchscreen. Also, other things like entering your copyright information is so much faster. All right, let's talk about autofocus mode on the stills or photography side. You know, the Digic 5 processor, I believe, should make it faster in terms of autofocus, but again, I'm not really seeing it. There's a FlexiZone single and a FlexiZone multi, and there's the older uh, face detection as well, but the FlexiZones are really slow. Um, you can actually touch the screen and focus, which is really a kind of a cool thing, but when you need to do things quickly, uh, I think you guys might be a little bit disappointed on how slow they are. Um, talking about face detection, uh, especially with these new STM lenses in video mode, it's kind of cool because you could set the camera up like I am right here, and if I'm moving in and around, you'll see that the lens can track with you. But again, it's kind of on the slow side. Um, what I found is that the 40 millimeter pancake is slower and the 18-135 does actually a little bit job, a better job, but it's still slow itself. But the real big issue here is on the T4i, we do not have quick focus mode in movie mode anymore. All the other Canon from the 5D, 7D, 60D, T3i, T2i all have quick focus mode for movie mode. I don't know why they got rid of it. Maybe it has something to do with this new AF servo mode for movie mode. But man, I really miss it. I wish they would include that in the T4i. And that's, you know, I give an advantage to the 60D on this one because the quick focus mode, especially in your situation where you can't see the back of the screen very well. Let's say there's sunlight coming behind you and you, you can kind of see that you're aiming the camera at the right object and you do a quick focus, boom, boom, shutter goes up, down kind of thing and you've locked in. Um, sure, you know, for run and gun shooters like myself, it's just an awesome feature to have in situations like that. So I really miss that on the T4i. So right, let's talk about face detection mode again real quickly. This camera, the T4i, reminds me of the Sony A7 VII review I did last year. And when you watch the lens and how it moves when it's trying to track this doll, sorry, I just grabbed it out of my girl's collection. But as you watch the doll move, you'll see that the lens will, you know, just not do anything and all of a sudden lock in. And then it won't do anything and then it'll lock in after a few inches. So it's not like when you're manually focusing and you're, you're pulling focus nice and smooth. You're not gonna get that. Both the a7 VII and the T4i just don't do that yet. And I think the first manufacturer that can actually do that, I don't know if it's the new Digic 10 processor in several years from now, but the first one that cracked that nut, I think, especially if you're gonna do it at 2.8, is gonna sell a ton of cameras. So if you're thinking that on the T4i that you can touch the screen on one object, and then touch the screen on the other object to follow focus to, it's not gonna be a super smooth transition. 
One of the things I'm really excited about with the T4i new feature is you can record up to 30 minutes now. Not that I ever really do it that often, but when I need to, it's kind of a really nice feature, especially in an interview situation where you just want to let the camera roll. And one of the things I thought was going to happen, um, and the way I tested it is I just took a tripod leg and I was moving it up and down and I was waiting for it to create a separate file because it just basically creates separate video files. And then your nonlinear editor, you just back them up to each other and then you watch it and I was expecting to see the uh, leg of the tripod kind of change dramatically from one spot to another um, but it never did it was perfectly seamless it never skipped a beat or skipped a frame which I was expecting it to do and in my test at 13 minutes and 10 seconds you would see it start to blink and it was giving me a 35 second warning that it was going to create a new file after that you can see the timer just keeps going and when I stop recording, you can see it tells me that I've created two separate files. Next up is the HDMI output on these cameras, and they're kind of different. The T4i has a more of a cleaner image, let's say, than the 60D, and the 60D has a little bit more extra junk on the screen. It doesn't quite work as well as T4i, so we're seeing improvement there, but definitely not a super clean image. On the T4i, when you plug the HDMI cord in, not only does the screen disappear, which happens pretty much on all Canon cameras, but you can't use the touchscreen anymore, obviously. All right, let's talk about frames per second and how fast these cameras can shoot. And they're both very similar. Um, when I was testing RAW, I was shooting RAW on the T4i. The burst mode was five frames per second, and that would last for about the first second. And then after that, it slowed down to about two and a half frames per second. And then it would take about four seconds for the buffer to clear up, and then you could start shooting at five frames a second after that. The 60D did about four frames per second when shooting raw, but instead of only lasting one second like the T4i did before slowing down, the 60D lasted about five seconds. Then it slowed down to about one frame per second, and then it took about 15 seconds for the buffer to clear. All right, in terms of audio, the T4i has a stereo mic and 60D has a mono mic. Uh, they sound pretty similar, although I think the 60D wins out slightly on preamp noise. T4i, 60D. Microphone is right here, and the stereo microphones are up here. So right now I'm only about a foot away from these microphones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Testing both of these microphones. Now I'm going to be totally quiet and see which one is noisier. All right, I want to talk about the kit lens that comes with the camera. The 18-135 is pretty decent. I shot a lot of time lapses with it at night and it seemed fairly sharp. I didn't do any extensive tests. Um, uh, to compare it against you know higher end lenses but it, overall it seemed like a pretty good lens now one of the things you, you've got to watch out for on these stm lenses um, especially the 18 135 is that's an efs lens so if you're thinking about an upgrade path that maybe someday you might want to go to a full frame camera just know that this lens will not work on a full frame camera it just won't physically mount and then in terms of the 40 millimeter um, pancake lens, and actually also the STM, in terms of manual focusing these lens, they're kind of a bear. Um, it's just as you're starting to get close and you're getting almost close to where you seem to keep turning. Whereas, you know, a normal, like an L-series glass, it's you just turn it and boom, you're locked on for manual focus. So just know that manual focusing these new STM lenses are kind of a bear. All right, two other features that I, you know, you could go either way on. Um, there's an LCD display on top of the 60D. I personally don't use it that often. I know a lot of people do. Um, also, the 60D has a larger grip than the T4i, but it's not like a massively large difference. You know, if you're going from like the T2i to the Canon 5D Mark III, there's a big difference. When you hold the 5D Mark III for a while and then you go back to the T2i, you're like, whoa, I'm gonna drop this thing. <laughs> so there, there's a slight difference. Also one thing to consider on the 60D, it has a nice battery in it that will upgrade to a full frame camera like the 5D Mark III, um, so you can have the same batteries. So it's something to keep in mind. And in terms of the rubber grip issue that the T4i was having, um, I checked the serial number on my particular unit and it didn't have an issue, but I understand that they've fixed the issue of the rubber grip turning white 
which if you have one of those, just check your seal number. I have a link on my website and you can see if yours is having that issue. All right, next up, we gotta talk about the T4i crashing. Um, I've used just about all the Canon cameras out there and they all crash at some point, but it's super, really, it's super rare. But the T4i for some reason seemed to crash way more than any other camera. Um, I even have footage of where the screen is on, but I've turned the camera all the way off and it totally locks up, you just can't do anything. And then basically what you have to do in that instance, you have to pull the battery out, put it back in, turn the camera off, turn it back on, and you're good to go. And you kind of like a rebooting. But just know that the T4i for my particular camera uh, crashed quite a bit. All right, before I give you my conclusions on these cameras, if you wanna help support my site, head over to my gear page if you're gonna buy like a T4i or anything, uh, video, audio related. So it won't cost you anything extra and it'll help me make more videos like these. These, these videos do take some time. A whole month of testing two cameras is pretty time intensive. So if you could help me out, that'd be great. Also keep an eye out. I'd say in another maybe couple of weeks, I'll have my T4i getting started guide. Um, it's over two and a half hours of content that you can purchase. And also we have t-shirts on my site as well if you're interested in geeky photography t-shirts. So in conclusion, the T4i in terms of the touch screen, the touch screen is a big winner for me. I just love it. Every time I go back to one of my older cameras, I'm like touching the screen. So definitely a big winner. The autofocus for movie modes, not quite there yet. Um, I could see maybe using it on maybe on a B camera where you don't have an operator and you're not shooting at a shoot super shallow depth of field, like maybe down at like 2.8, so like a 5.6 and you wanna help track the person and you have no person to operate the camera. And that might work pretty well, but it's not quite there yet. So do you buy an image quality or do you buy in features? For me, I buy an image quality and we haven't seen any image quality difference between the 70 that came out in 2009 to what we have today with the T4i. I'm not on this APS-C sensor. Um, I think it's the same exact sensor we've had all these years. And you know, I think Canon, you know, to develop a new APS sensor must cost I'm gonna guess, and I've talked to some of my real techie friends that are into you know, making processors and stuff like that, and I think we all came to the conclusion that it takes probably 20 to $40 million, I'm gonna guess. And that would only be 3% of Canon's overall R&D budget from the, the numbers that I looked at, and I'm not a fan, financial guy or anything, but 3% of the R&D. So it costs a ton of money to make a new sensor, and I get it, um, but we've had the same sensor since 2009. So I'd love Canon to hurry up and make a new APS-C sensor, because again, I'm not seeing a big difference here between the two. I'm not even seeing a big difference between the Digic 4 and the Digic 5 processor. So let's say you're short on cash, you shoot only raw still images, you don't shoot movies, you might wanna consider actually getting an old T2i because on Craigslist, you can pick them up for like 350, 400 bucks. And you're gonna have the same image quality as these people have a 60D, a 70D. All these APS-C sensors have not changed since 2009. So you're, if you don't care about features and you're short in cash, you might consider that option. So now the question is, am I gonna upgrade? Well, I'd say no, because I don't upgrade on features, I upgrade on image quality. So again, I don't know why we haven't seen a new um, APS-C sensor since 2009, since the 7D came out, but I'm gonna wait until the new one comes out with the new sensor. Sure, all the new features are awesome, and I, one of the things I probably miss the most is the tilt-out screen, for especially those lower high shots. I would love to have that, but I can wait. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm coming from an advanced amateur background, so take it or leave it, and I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye.